Okay, welcome back. This is going to be the women's portion of the makeup tutorial for um, on camera. I'm going to take you through some of the stuff that I'm going to use. Um, first, start with skincare. I usually use a moisturizer, basic moisturizer. Again, not greasy, it's best. I'll always offer eye drops if they need it to take out red or if they're dry. Lip conditioner. For women, it can have a shine. That's fine. It doesn't have to be matte. Um, and then just a note that I did clean my brushes in between use, in between people with brush cleanser. Um, I think a lot of companies sell this brand. If you just Google brush cleanser, you can come up. Or you can wash them with a hair shampoo, wring them out, and let them dry overnight, and they dry, and they're like new. And then makeup remover wipes for either before application or after. Um, then we have our foundation, our eyeshadows, any brand is fine. Um, you can use matte or shimmer, it doesn't matter. Sometimes shimmer uh, for older adults with kind of wrinkly skin doesn't work too well, so you'd want to stick with the matte colors. Um, blushes, lip gloss, lip pencil, lipstick, concealer, mascara, again using the disposable wand for hygiene. Um, brow set, clear um, mascara, if you want to set their brows as well. And the brushes, but I'll take you through how to use everything. Okay, so our model today is going to be Mary Beth. Okay, let's just make sure it's going to work. Can you zoom in a little bit? So, Every makeup artist has their own uh, tips and tricks. I like to start with skincare, and then um, I actually start with the eyes. And that is because if, say I'm using black eyeliner or a darker color, sometimes the powder will fall onto the cheek, so um, that way it's easy to clean up. So if you do the foundation first and then you get any kind of powder eyeshadow on the cheeks, I need to wipe it off and kind of start again. So I start with the eyes. So first I'm going to um, moisturize the skin using my moisturizer on a sponge. And just get everywhere. And so I'm doing, I'm prepping the skin before I'm doing the eyes and the foundation just so this can kind of set in. For men, I think I did it. Uh, right before the foundation, that's fine. And if they have sensitive skin or anything else, you know, you can just kind of make sure that they're comfortable with using the product. Or you can ask them if they moisturize before, and then that should be fine. You can also use an eye cream underneath the eye that needs some moisture. And then I will be putting on the lip conditioner as well, so that can kind of take a little time and, and moisturize the lips before I put lipstick on while I'm doing the eyes. Okay, so I'm going to start with the eyes, and what I like to do is to use a um, primer for the eyes, which I'm not seeing on my table. Let me grab it one second. So basically, a makeup, an eyeshadow primer um, helps the eyeshadow stay. It also helps the pigment um, become a little bit more bright, more true to color than it looks like. Um, but primarily, I use it because it just lasts. And you know, the creasing eyeshadow, this prevents it. So you, they come in normally creams. So I'm just going to put a very little amount on the eyes. Just wiping off some excess on my hand. Um, depending on what color you get, they usually come in neutral colors, but I probably you know, wouldn't go all the way up to the brow just because um, if it's a, a color that's not so neutral, just want to kind of keep it on the lids. So just making sure there's no creases in it. 
I have really oily lids, so every morning I use an eye primer, an eyeshadow primer, and it really keeps my shadow on all day. Okay, then I'm going to go for the eyeshadows. And, um, you know, for just basic beauty, you can just, this is a, a pretty neutral set. Um, you know, you want to keep it natural if they want a little bit more, you know, you could do like a smoky eye, but pretty much for your standard female makeup, I will just do a pretty neutral beige or pink, and then maybe do a little, you know, crease, a little bit darker crease, just to make the eye pop a little bit more. But you want to pray, stay pretty neutral. You don't want to do any crazy blues or greens, just for your, you know, basic. If they want it, then fine. But So I'm going to use a shimmery pink, and it's going to go all over the lid with an eyeshadow brush. So the lid is everything from like the crease down to the lash line. So I'm not taking it above under the brow, I'm just keeping it on the lid of the eye. Get a little bit more. So you can probably see that everything I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using brushes. Brushes are really the best way to put on makeup. They are a little bit more of an investment. They are probably the most expensive thing that you will have in your kit, but they should last a lifetime. I've had mine for about 15 years. And they look like new because I will wash them with hair shampoo every few weeks. But um, it helps. You, know, you don't waste product. It helps the color go on smoothly. It's not very hygienic to use your fingers. Um, brushes are really the best way to apply makeup. So I just put this kind of neutral shimmery pink on the lid. Then I'm going to go in with a darker crease color, as I'm going to call it. Now, it could be a brown. It could be a color. It could be a purple. It could be anything. I'm going to stick pretty neutral for Mary Beth. I'm going to use a brown. And what you want to use is you want to use a crease brush with it, which are these brushes. They're kind of fluffy, um, round tips. And because the bristles are more far apart, you get kind of a more sheer application. The firmer the brush is, the more close the bristles are, you're going to get a lot more color. So crease brushes are nice for a really sheer application of color. So I'm going to uh, pick I think a brown. And I'm going to use shimmer on Mary Beth just because she's young and fun. But again, if it's someone a little bit more mature, you might want to use matte colors without shimmer. Um, so the technique for the crease, I call it kind of a Lexus L, like the car. So you're going to start, you're always going to start out to in with your color. So I'm going to put a little bit of color on the outer corners. And then you're going to blend in in the crease. So always staying on the outer corner and blending in. So it's going a little bit by the lash line and then a little bit up to the crease. The same thing on the other side. Outer corner, going up, blending out to in, out to in. Because if you, you want the most concentration of color to be on the outside of the lid. So if you're always doing out to in, out to in, the most amount of color is going to stay on the outer corners. So kind of down by the lash line, focusing on the corner, and in. Now I'm going to use a clean, separate brush to blend it. Um, the first brush, you know, put a bunch of color on, but I want to blend it and make it really smooth looking. So I'm going to use a clean brush to blend it. So basically I'm just going over what I did, but it's kind of blending the color and it's going to look not so strong. Stay in the outer corner, going down by the lash line, and going in. So you can see the concentration of color is pretty much outer corner. Go ahead and open your eyes. So outer corners. Okay, close. 
And if someone has kind of a hard crease, it's hard to tell, you can always have them open your eyes and look straight ahead and then keep their eyes open and just kind of blend this way. And that can kind of, it, it clearly shows the crease there. Okay, in close. Now I'm going to do eyeliner. Um, there are many different ways you can use eyeliner. You can use a pencil, you can use cream, you can use powder. Um, I'm going to use a cream um, just because it lasts a little bit longer. And I'm going to be using an angled liner brush, a small angled liner brush. So the trick to eyeliner is keeping it very close to the lash line. And basically what you're going to do is just dot it along the lash line. I'm just taking the brush and dotting it. You could do this technique with a powder. You could do this technique with even a pencil if you want to put the pencil on and then blend it with the brush. Or you can even do it with a liquid. And this is a cream. I'm just patting it. And this is a brown color. It's just a little bit more natural. So again, I'm doing the eyes first. Um, I was pretty good. Not a lot of the brown fell to the cheek. But as you can see, this is a darker color. Had I have done her foundation and her concealer first, if anything would have fallen, any of the pigment would have fallen on the skin, I would have had to clean it, therefore wiping off the foundation and basically making me redo it, which would make my job even harder. And especially when you're on a time crunch. That's what I learned how to do it this way. Okay, then I'm going to do the mascara. You do want to use a disposable wand for hygiene. Um, you can use black or brown mascara. It doesn't really matter. Um, you could curl their lashes if they wanted it or needed it. Sometimes I'll offer, you know, say, do you want to curl your own lashes? Because we're, you know, we're more comfortable doing it on ourselves. If you did want to curl their lashes, um, just have them look down, kind of lift the lid and put it in and make sure that you're not getting their skin. But Mary Beth doesn't really need that. So I'm going to have her look down, not close her eyes all the way, and I'm going to lift the lid. I'm going to go over the top of the lashes and then under. I'm just kind of using back and forth zigzag motions. You can use mascara underneath. You just want to remember wherever you're going to put your color, that's where the focus goes. So if you put mascara on the bottom and the top, it kind of sometimes can make it seem like the eyes are closed. When you just keep it on the top, it makes them look really open. So I just tend to just like mascara on the top lid. And if anything gets a little clumpy, you can always use a clean mascara wand to kind of go through it to get the clumps out. Or sometimes if it's a huge uh, clump, I'll get my finger and just scrub it out of there. And then sometimes I just have them look straight ahead, just kind of do the ends. If you guys want to do false lashes, I can show you in another video. <laughs> 